pull the mic in. Right. Looks okay. Sound all right? Yep. All right. Let's go. We're going to keep going with the uh, tournament master class. Started this the other day. I've gone through this one and a half times. Uh, most of this, the sites or the parts of it are reset because uh, when I renewed my membership, I did it a day late, so all my progress got wiped out. But that's fine because we're going to go through it again. We left off at equity. Now let's discuss the very important topic of equity. Equity is essentially how much of any individual pot you own. And that kind of implies that the result of any individual hand doesn't actually matter because sometimes you're going to win and sometimes you're going to lose. Sometimes you're going to have the best hand and lose. Sometimes you're going to have the worst hand and win. That is part of poker that you have to understand and accept and embrace. If you think about a fair coin flip, right? Say we just flip a coin, it's 50-50, we're going to win or lose. Say we flip it and I lose and you win, it doesn't mean that you played great. It means that you won this one time, right? And the fact that I lost also doesn't mean I played poorly. If you get it all in pocket aces and lose to pocket sevens, it doesn't mean you played poorly. It just means it got unlucky, right? And that is important to understand and accept and realize that you, know, you are going to play many, many hands throughout your poker career, and you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. But as long as you are getting your money in good over and over again, that produces equity, which will make you a winning player in the long run. Let me show you how to use a few formulas to figure out how much equity you have. Well, let's take a fair coin flip where we're going to flip the coin. If you win, you win $100. If you lose, you lose $100. There's actually an equation you can use to solve how much you win or lose in this situation. And that is your equity, your EV, your expected value. Realize um, expected value and equity are slightly different, but for now we're just going to use that term interchangeably. Your EV equals the percent of the time you win times the amount you win plus the percent of the time you lose times the amount you lose. This number will usually be a negative number, right? Because you're losing. So let's fill in the blanks. Take a second, figure out how you would fill in these blanks and figure out how much you win or lose when you flip a coin on average. Well, this is one of those ones where I just kind of go through the steps of it even though it's obviously we know the answer already so your percent to win you are 50 percent to win so 0 0.50 times the amount you win hundred dollars plus the amount you lose minus or times the the percent you lose minus the amount you lose so fifty dollars is our first part the percent you lose is 50% times the amount you lose is $100 negative minus 50. So if you have minus 50 and plus 50, you get zero. Means you have no expected value on a coin flip. Your equity may be 50%. That's the distinction. Well, we plug in the numbers, 50% of the time we win $100 <clears throat> plus the 50% of the time we lose $100 equals $0. This is 50 minus 50 equals mm -hmm. zero, which makes sense, right? It's a 50-50 flip. We should <laughs> win yeah, and lose ahead. nothing on average. So realize you can flip the coin and much better than that. win or lose six or eight times in a row. And it doesn't mean you played poorly or played great. It's just random, right? But on average, no one wins or loses money in that game. Let's change it just a tiny, tiny bit. Let's change it just a tiny, tiny bit. Let's say, now we're going to do that exact same thing. We're going to flip a coin, but now instead of winning $100 when you win, you win $200 when you win. But when you lose, you only lose $100. So basically, you're getting paid $200 when you win, but you're only paying $100 when you lose. Take a second. So this is the old poker player's riddle where what would you need to flip a coin for your net worth? And the, the, the 
the correct answer, the mathematically correct answer, the Skolansky answer, is you'd only need 1% to flip for your net worth. So if you won 51% of the time versus you know, 49% of the time, it would be worth it to increase your net worth more than half the time by some certain percentage. And then the debate comes about about how much would you actually bet for it. And I've seen guys do this. Uh, dealing poker at the Venetian, I've seen guys sit there and go, you know, they start with this concept, and then over the course of, I remember one time there was a course of hours where these two guys I already knew were playing well above where they should be. Like, these guys were, they did not have the bankroll to be buying in for 10 grand, which was about what they had, and they played all night, and they were both sitting on like, I think they were both sitting on like 15 or 18 grand or something like that. And it was funny because the one guy was a super gambler and the other guy was more of a conservative guy. And I was watching this and I'm sitting dead and they're just having this discussion. And I said, do you guys want me to deal? Because they were kind of like, you know, they were, they were acquaintances. They weren't friends. They kind of had words for each other sometimes. But they were like, no, 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 that's fine. And I just sat dead and they were waiting for other people to get there. And while they're having this discussion, they're involving me in it. And I said, well, you know, the perspective for me, because I'm a working stiff, you know, I don't have 10 grand anywhere in my life, let alone on a table in front of me. I said, I would need a bigger chunk, you know? So it's like, if I was going to flip for a hundred dollars, I would need you to pay me 200 when I want. And I used this exact example and, uh, they bantied it about back and forth and all like that. And they came up with 60, 40, uh, where the gambler guy was willing to take 40% to get paid uh, to take the flip versus the conservative guy who wanted 60%. And if you don't know how that ends, uh, <laughs> the gambler guy won. And, uh, you know, he took the worst of it and won, which was pretty much this guy's whole life. Uh, although the winning ran out eventually, and I think he actually ended up uh, in a really bad situation. Like <laughs> drugs and it was very bad. But uh, anyway, so th this is a classic conversation you'll see. So now the way you figure out this is you still win 50% of the time, right? Times the amount you win, well, now it's $200, right? So obviously your expected value on that is 100 bucks, And then plus the amount you lose when you lose. Now, this time when you lose, uh, your percent you lose is still 0.5 times losing a hundred dollars make it negative so you win a hundred when you win and you lose 50 so your expected value is fifty dollars and people usually don't understand that concept it's because on the ones that you lose it takes away from what you win so you don't you don't your expected value is half in this exact perfect example fill in the blank solve this equation and try to figure out how much you profit every time you flip the coin on average. So the concept here is you profit $50 every time you flip the coin. So if you ask a player, how many times will you take this bet? They will say, I will take this bet a million times if you like. If I don't run out of money and nobody runs out of money, I will take this bet a million times. We can sit here for the rest of my life flipping this coin and my expectation is $50. So even if I lose 10 times in a row and I lose $1,000, those flips actually are winning me money even though i'm losing money in the real world i took a much better expected value shot at a percentage of a win so every time the coin flips while it's in the air i've made fifty dollars when it lands depends on when i get paid that's the way i like to explain this so let's say you know you have aces for a hundred dollars right the bet to you is a hundred you call off a hundred right playing one two and the other guy rolls over kings before the flop comes out Okay, you've already made, uh, well, let's figure it out here. You're 80, 20, right? So if it's $100 to win uh, times uh, 0.8, you're gonna win $80. And then when you lose, right? So you're, cause you're gonna win 80% of the time. So you're winning 80 bucks, right? Uh, minus the Kings are gonna beat you 20% of the time times the 100 bucks. So you're going to lose 20. So your expect your expected value is $60. So that means that when you get in the money for 100 bucks, aces versus kings, before all the cards are dealt, you've already won 60 bucks. That's the concept. Is that you've already made the correct decision. Now it's a matter of when the coin lands if you get paid or not.
just the way I like to think of it. Well, let's plug in the equation. We have 0.5, 50 percent of the time. We still only win half the time, right? Times two hundred dollars, which is what we win when we win, plus fifty percent of the time minus a hundred dollars when we lose. If we do this math, we have a hundred minus fifty equals fifty dollars in profit every time we flip this coin. Obviously, again though, sometimes you're going to go on down swings where you lose multiple flips in a row, but on average you're going to win money in this scenario. Now you may say no one would ever offer you 200 when you win and 100 when you lose. That's just not how life works. Well, it doesn't work like that in regular life, but in poker, that scenario often comes up at the poker table, and you need to make sure that you understand when these very profitable propositions are being offered to you. So let's take a look at a poker example. Let's say we're in a poker hand on the turn, and your opponent goes all in for $100 into a $200 pot. And let's just presume that in this scenario, we know that we're going to win only 30% of the time. Well, how much do we win or lose by making this call? One important point worth noting is that once money is already in the pot, that money is no longer yours. So this $200 pot, it doesn't matter that you put some amount of that money in. You could have put a lot of it in, none of it in, a little bit of it in. That does not matter. All that matters is that money is in the pot. So in this scenario, ask yourself, how much are we risking? How much can we lose? And then ask yourself, how much can we win? Take a second. So these are fun. And these I always like to, I can do these in my head very quickly, but I like to write these out because when I'm trying to explain it or I'm trying to solidify my thoughts on it. So I'm gonna show you how we do that here. Hang on. So, and there are times where this comes up so much, like in hyper tournaments, I used to always have a notepad open so I could do this math and see it visually represented. Now, this is part of my advantage and disadvantage of being dyslexic. Picturing the stuff in my head is much easier for me than talking it out. And when I say it's much easier, I don't mean it's the same as everybody else. I mean, I actually can do it much quicker in my head than the average person because of the way my brain is routed but I can't explain it as well. So your EV is the percent of the time or the percent of the amount, or sorry, the percent of the time you win plus the amount you win. Okay. So you are going to win this pot 70% of the time, right? So that's 0.7 times the amount you win. So it's a hundred dollars into a $200 pot. Okay. This is the part that my brain gets muddled. So it's a $200 pot, uh, and we just start, well, the amount you win would be $300 because you're putting in the 100 into 200 Or is it just, you know what, this is the part where my brain skips a beat. I think it's times the $200. So $200 plus, it might be the full $300, I'm fucking up. Hey, what's up, Gray Fox? Uh, times the percent you lose. Uh, times the amount you lose. Okay, so yeah, so the percent you lose, point, point 0.3 times the amount you lose, $100, okay? I might be fucking this up. We might have to count the, well, we don't count the 100 because we don't win that. That's our investment. So now the calculator is in. It's point 0.7 times 200. That's what we win. So $140 uh, plus the percent we lose and the amount we lose. Okay, so uh, what is it? 30% of $100 is 30 bucks, right? So we're going to subtract $30 from this. So in this exact scenario, oh, God, I fucked that up. 140 plus negative $30. Ding. $110. That's our winning that's our expected value on this call. Getting three to one on a call, winning 30% of the time. It's pretty good. Pause the video if you need to, fill in the blanks. Well, in this scenario, if we lose, we lose $100. Oh, I'm a schmuck. Yeah, I didn't bet, I didn't add in the $100. Okay, so it's wrong. So it's, yeah, I did it wrong. Plus it's 0.7. We're going to lose. I reverse the numbers. See, that's the problem with my dyslexia. I can do it in my head, 
but I can't ex- I can't explain it. I'm gonna have to stop doing that and just start giving the answer because that's gonna fuck you guys up. Yeah, so it's you win, you win three hundred dollars because your opponent bet a hundred into two hundred. That makes three hundred. You're gonna win it thirty percent of the time. That's a hundred bucks. You're gonna lose seventy percent of the time putting in your hundred dollars. So negative one hundred times seventy percent is negative seventy dollars. So twenty bucks is your expected value. Yep, schmuckle. Dollars, right? Because that's the amount we have to call. Isn't it negative thirty dollars? Wait a minute. A hundred bucks plus negative thirty. Am I wrong? If we win, we negative, win. Negative 70 is $30, not $20. $300, which is going to be the pot plus our opponent's bet. That's the part that I didn't add in, the opponent's bet. So we have 0.3 times 300 plus 0.7 minus, times minus 100 equals $20 profit. So even the That's wrong. It's $30. <laughs> this is 100 bucks plus negative 70 it's 30 dollars so we're only going to win 30 percent of the time it's funny because jonathan little i think his brain works similarly to mine i think that's why i learned so well from him you'll see throughout this course he'll be like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute those numbers aren't right hang on i said it wrong blah 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 blah, blah. it's it's hard stuff to translate verbally but it's the kind of thing that you know in your head uh very easily every time we are presented this scenario we actually make twenty dollars by calling we make 30 and that's something that takes a lot of people a lot of time to wrap their head around because they think you need to be a big favorite all the time but that is absolutely not true the amount of money that's in the pot is highly important whenever you're making your decisions i mean hypothetically let's say instead of the pot being two hundred dollars it was um three thousand dollars let's just change it here on the fly okay so now how would this change the equation if the pot was three thousand dollars that's the only thing we're going to change well, now this number here would become 3,100, right? So let's get out the calculator real quick and solve this. See how much money we're going to make by calling in this scenario, even though we're only going to win 30% of the time. We would do 0. 0.3 times times 3,100 minus 0. 0.7 times negative 100 is 70 equals 860. So in this scenario, if the pot was $3,000, let's say it's for some reason just a load of money in the pot, by making this call, even though we're only going to win 30% of the time, we win $860, which is huge. It's hugely profitable. So understand that you do not need to be the favorite or know you're going to win 70% of the time to justify making calls in a lot of poker scenarios. And in fact, you'll find that it's often okay to even be a little bit behind because there will already be money in the pot. And we'll discuss that thoroughly throughout this masterclass. Let's take a look at a, one more poker example. Suppose we get it all in before the flop with ace-king offsuit against jack-10 suited. Let's presume the pot has 10,000 chips in it. Okay. This is one where now we're going to get into using Equilab, which a couple people sent me messages about. Uh, just search Equilab on Google. I forget the exact site. It might be PokerStrategy.com. Yeah, I think that's it. PokerStrategy.com Equilab. Okay, so now what you do is you take the exact hands and try to run the equities. Okay, so it's Ace King off. So Ace of Diamonds, King of Hearts is our exact hand versus the Jack Ten suited, and we're gonna do the. Uh, jack 10 of spades so we don't counterfeit any of the suits right so you have these two hands you run the equities 41 percent to the jack 10 58 well almost 59 to us so there's 10,000 chips in the pot so it's very easy to figure out zoop 10,000 chips in the pot times what we own point we'll say 59 percent Ta-da, 5,900 uh, of this 10,000 chips is what we own of this pot. That is our equity. That is how much we own. It's like when you have a house and you've made payments and you know, you've know you paid it down and let's say you bought a house for 10,000, let's say, and you paid down 8,000 even the, and you only have that much more to go on the loan. If the house rose in value to a million dollars, well, then you paid off 80% of it. Your equity in the home is $800,000 because that's the percentage of the value you own. Same concept in poker, right? Now, 
it gets a little murky. And it's funny because a situation like this came up in a tournament I was playing two days ago where uh, this player opened from the cutoff and I three bet him huge from the button. And I actually had exactly ace king. And it was a funny situation. And I three bet him huge. He put in 80% of his chips. Uh, and I had just a monster stack. And then the flop came down like nine four seven or something like that, or no, it was it was ten four seven, and he's first to act and he just jams it right. And I'm sitting there and he while he was thinking, I was like, "There's no flop I can fold here. There's literally no flop I can fold with Ace King, no matter what flops." And sure enough, the guy jammed all the chips in, and it was like twenty percent of or ten percent of what was in the pot because we had gotten eighty percent of the chips pre flop. And I just snap called it with ace king. And that particular instance, the guy had jack 10. I still had the proper equity to call him because I had, you know, six over cards I could hit to win, but it didn't matter. There was another situation like that the same day where almost the same exact thing happened where I had three bet again and it was a different player and the flop came off uh, nine high. And the guy jammed from the small blind on me doing a stop and go. And once again, I called it. I think I had ace queen that time. And the guy just so happened to have uh, no pair. And so in that scenario, I actually won that hand. Uh, I lost the other one. But you can see that sometimes because of all the money that's already gone in, it really doesn't matter what happens after that. Because at that point, there's no read strong enough that's going to make it a good idea for you to fold. Right? Like in the one where I had ace king... And the guy had jack 10. It was this exact same scenario. We can actually add to the, the equation the actual board. So I'm going to put the board out of, you know, jack of hearts, four of diamonds. Uh, I think I had two of the suits, so three of diamonds, right? Now we evaluate the equity, okay? I only have 28%, okay? But check it out. We put in 80% of the chips preflop of our own stacks. So let's just make it easy. Let's say we both had uh, 100 chips, right? So we both got 80 in the pot, right? So that's 80 chips from both of us times 2. Oh, sorry. Is 160 chips, right? The flop comes down, this flop, and he jams 20 chips into it, Okay. So now that expected value position, it doesn't matter. Even if I know the true equities, he can jam his chips in, show me his hand. And then it's costing me $20 to win $180, right? So what we do is we go $180 times our expected value to win 28%, 0.28. Equals, uh, $50 in equity versus what we lose, right? So now it's 50.4. This is just how you do this in your head on the fly. So now when we lose, right, it's the last 20 that we put in. Because remember, we don't count any of that other money. It's the last 20 that we lose for the call times 0.7. We'll even go higher and say 0.72 to the negative, minus 14, plus what we win, you can see it's still a profitable call for us because we are gonna win often enough at those pot odds to profit $36. So there's no reason to fold. So like as soon as the guy called, I was like, what is he doing? Like he should just jam all the chips in. And the numbers were bigger. so. If he had folded on the flop, he still would have had like five or six blinds left. But there was already like 90 in the pot. It was fucking bananas. Like, I don't know what he was doing. Uh, he should have just jammed it. Maybe he thought he was all in, but he took a long time to call. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to stop and go. Maybe there's some small chance that I fold. But that literally never happens. We both know we're not folding. He's going to do the stop and go uh, because he's never going to check fold when I bet and put them all in. And I know I'm never going to fold because of my the value of my hand. But I have seen it work where some players will fold the ace-king there. And it is a tragic mistake. So that's how you figure out this kind of shit on the fly. As you do this work ahead of time, 
and then realize, ah, Christ, I made everything minimize, and then realize uh, that's what you're that's what you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? You have to figure out exactly when you should fold or call. Why is this frozen now? That's hilarious. Enable preview. I don't know if the preview is frozen. Hold on, let me reload this. Might have just crashed the whole stream. Hang on. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Are you serious? No, it's working. Uh, is my stream still moving for you guys? Because... Uh, you gotta know when to fold them, know when to hold them. Very true. And funny enough, the answer a lot of times is don't fold them. <laughs> uh, is the stream frozen for you? I can hear it, but it's not moving. Yeah, I, I don't see any motion. Do you guys see me moving at all? Because for some reason this isn't this isn't working. Looks like the camera's frozen. Okay, I think what's going on here, OBS is frozen right now because I minimized. Uh, hang on one sec. I'm gonna I'm gonna close the stream and reopen it really quickly. 